you're going into planning season, right? And most of your plans are going to be based around obviously what's happened this year, what you think the year is going to end at, and what's going to happen next year. And a lot of next year is what? Also new products because your growth is it's tough to keep getting growth on growth yep. with same, same, right? You got to bring yep. some new stuff in. Yep. So during planning presentations, you may not pitch a lot of new products, but there are opportunities when you're doing, let's say, let's say it was you and you were J&J &J and you guys came in and yep. Tylenol has been growing at 3% a year or whatever it was. And you said, we're going to have a 10% increase. And I'd look at you and think, okay, yeah, whatever. Are you crazy? Yeah. yeah. That's another J&J &J yeah. bullshit story. We're going to get 10%. I don't know how we're going to get 10, but you walk me through how do we get 10 and that's where the presentation can be done. So I do think they're actually either having this in your head or written down and getting ready to do this, even in planning season, isn't the worst thing to do. Definitively, once you're out of planning season, Jan, Feb, March, April, you got to be ready to do this, right? I, yeah, I think, I think the, and the other scenario that we're thinking about is if you are a small brand um, that is getting ready to present to, you know, you, you probably, if you're a small brand and you're getting ready to present to a big retail chain or a medium-sized retail chain, you've probably already done some informal presentations with small retailers. No disrespect there, but the prep work required for a big retailer is extensive, right? Because there's a lot of things you got to worry about. The questions are, are a little bit different, and then they expect more, right? Um, every and if sometimes, retailer, so just so we're clear, yeah. if retailers importing four or five stores, is a big retailer. Correct. Law Correct. Laws Correct. is obviously yeah. a big so, retailer. So like a single mom and pop or a single store, there's no disrespect, but you can walk in and say, here's what I have for you. Typically. Do you think you're interested? And then typically they, they'll decide on the spot, yeah, you know what, Let, let's give it a try yeah. or let's, yeah. let's see if we can make yeah. it work. When you go to anybody who has multiple stores, um, there are things that you need to do in order to be a buyer. You cannot present... Uh, we've we've had brands that you know have graduated out of farmers markets and are trying to go to retail that have tried the farmers market pitch on a buyer, which will never work. Never right? work. And so what Kenny and I thought we would do is um, we we've answered these questions um, I don't know multiple times over the years, right? Um, for different folks, so we thought we just put this times. together because it's just something that. Um, you kind of need to know, especially if you're little and moving, trying to move to retail. Right. Um, so we, we broke this into three categories, uh, what a buyer needs to see, what a buyer needs to hear, and then what a buyer needs to feel. Um, it's not definitive. If, uh, um, if you need a checklist, let us know and, and we can, we can um, get you a checklist. But I think um, what's important here, these three categories, and you can break this up any way you like, but I th we think that we've captured um, pretty succinctly in these three categories the things that a buyer needs to walk away with in order to make a proper decision on your product. I mean, do it this way. At bare minimum, mm -hmm. at bare minimum, this you, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. You can always add some different things or whatever, but I really don't think you can subtract from this. Correct. How's that? Correct. Yeah, correct. Okay, so so let's jump into it. We'll we'll talk about this, um, and then and then kind of um, get you through this this um, slide presentation. So let's just see if I'm as smart as I think I am. Um, well, are you a smart guy, Phil. Okay, so what a buyer needs to see. So when you are prepping a buyer deck for a buyer presentation, what things do you need to present? What kinds of things should you prepare for? So the first one is easy, right, Kenny? It's you have to have a presentation. So you can't walk in with a piece of paper or a sticky note or with your farmer's market pitch. There's no disrespect. Farmer's market pitch is for consumers at the consumer level. You are talking to someone who wants to buy your product in quantities, in larger quantities, and then for distribution within store levels. So you have to have a presentation. Yes. Yeah. Ideally concise do not bring me do not bring me a, a a deck that i need a crane to lift right because i'll tell you yeah. what i was the buyer literally and, and and if you can ask anybody who i bought from first page second page last page that's all i read 
So if you brought a hundred pages, you just wasted 97 sheets, 97 sheets of paper. I didn't give a shit. So I'm happy can, you had it. I'm happy you know it, but I don't need it. So I can, I can tell you that that's actually true because I presented, I think it was a feminine category Probably. to Kenny and, and I, I kept it small. I kept it to 20 pages. Um, as is our our way before, and then Kenny looked at the front, the second, and then the last page. Right. Um, yeah. 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 And you'll see in the next part. It, it doesn't mean you can't come unprepared. I just don't need to see everything necessarily. So be very, very clear, very concise. Have everything else ready, but I don't need to see all that. Really, all I want to know is I like to see a presentation. Tell me what you're showing me. A sample, if you can, would be awesome. Because buyers are typically pretty tactile, mm -hmm. want to see it, want to feel mm -hmm. what does it look like, et cetera, right? Nothing there. I definitely want to know my cost and my retails and how much am I going to make. And fundamentally, I can make my entire decision there. Based on those things. Yeah. I'm done. In, yeah. it, again, for a well-established um, category, you know, a, 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 you know, a line extensions, you know, you bring in a pasta sauce. I've got enough history in pasta sauce. I know what I need. I need a quick presentation. I need a sample, costs, retail. How much am I going to make? I, I think on the, the sample, because sometimes that causes uh, brands some angst, is if you are in the process of building something new <clears throat> and you do not have a sample, what you want to think about is when... um. When a buyer looks at a product, right? There's a tactile feel to it. There's an assessment of the product, but there's also some very tactical logistical things, right? I.e., how big is your, you know, it, like let's go with pasta sauce for a second. How big is the jar? Will it fit on shelf, I mean, right? This. So a, a buyer will look at the shelf and go, listen, I've I've got a I've got a 13 or 14 um, you know foot deep shelf, right? And yeah. your jars are, you know, um, sorry, in inches, right? And then, so how how big are your jars? How many am I going to fit? If you pack um, 12 in a case, but I can fit six on the shelf, what am I doing with the other six? Um, you know, things like that, that you may or may not be thinking about. A buyer has a responsibility to think about all of those things. Um, because if you were a small chain with five stores, um, if you ship the wrong product, five stores would be calling that buyer. If yeah. you went to a national chain that has say 300 to 1200 stores, um, 1200 stores would be calling the buyer going, listen, what do I do with the rest of this stuff? Like, why, Actually, why you send it to me? No, like no, you're wrong. You know what would happen in large? Uh -huh. Five would call Yeah. and that's it. Because on the before the sixth call, there's a recall and it's all gone. So there's okay. no more calls required. Yeah. Fair, fair. Fine. Yeah. I, I don't have to talk. Yeah. Nobody's going to bug me anymore. Yeah. One email to your assistants, send this out, get this stuff out of the stores. So, so from your side, if you're worried about that, what you want to think about is if you don't have a sample, then you find a placeholder, maybe an existing product that you have. You can be really clear. Buyers are really used to looking at concepts too. So you can Give say, this is a mock-up. It's not quite the final, but it's really, 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 really close. And then that should be good enough. Like buyers are, are pretty understanding that way. As I'll well. give you the one, Phil. I had a guy, I, I, we, were, we were talking at a, at a show and it wasn't a, a trade show. It was like a dinner show. Like it, mm. one of those things, right? And, you know, I bought a juice. It's really cool. The thought that I think, oh my God, this is, mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's no problem. I got room in the set. I know I was going to discontinue something. Yeah, that sounds really great, right? You know what I had in my head? I had a juice in glass, like a Bremner's, Yep. or like a Mott or whatever, what like that. So I knew in my head size, guy comes in, it's half the width, but like almost twice the height. I looked at him, so what am I, I going to do with this? Yeah. What, what Am I going to lay them flat on the shelf and just have uh, the, the bottle top showing or or what, right? Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, I think the other thing that I would say for little brands is when the buyer starts asking for, you, you should come prepared with retail so just a retail and, um, you know, margin. And I think the things that you also want to try and get from a buyer so you understand as well as when you present margin is how well you fit within the buyer's category. So if you think you're doing a really good thing by bringing in a 50 margin, um, 
you should be paying attention to what the buyer's reaction is to that, right? Most buyer, some buyers will tell you outright that's not enough, or that's enough, or that's great. Um, but you should also be asking, like, what do you expect out of this category? Um, right. I you know because that allows you to gather some intelligence. So the next time you present, you always know that you're in the right area, right? And um, if you can present retail, mm -hmm. like for for some national accounts, because of our lovely bread scandal. Mm -hmm is you don't bring retails into the building. You don't suggest anymore. Oh, really? Because retail, no, because we, right. because in essence- No more you, MSRP. Yeah, you can't price, it's price, you know, we can't get into the delusion, the illusion of price fixing. A suggested retail is just that. My product costs a dollar. My experience shows it sells at a dollar 99. Mm -hmm. You can get a 50 margin, mm -hmm. right? Many, there are big retailers that will not allow you to do that anymore. So what you need to do is what you just said. You really need to understand from the other side, though, what, what are you up against in yeah. terms of margins, which means you, you may have to work on the cost side a little bit more. Nobody cares what your retail is because that buyer might be able to get two ninety nine, dollars or maybe only a dollar forty nine, And at a dollar forty nine, dollars your cost is no good anymore. Correct. So Correct. you may have to really, to your point, you, you really need to understand before you get into that buyer, what are they dealing with on their shelves based on what you yeah. see? If yeah. you know yeah. Coke is $1.99 everywhere in the country and you've figured it out, everybody's making 50. So, you know, it's about a dollar purchase. If they're $1.49, you either have to make the assumption they're taking less margin or they're buying at 75 cents and holding the margin percentage. Yeah. yeah. You know, like yeah. do some work before you get there. Nothing yeah, worse than your point. You, you, where you have, you're, you know, you're thinking, oh, I'll give you 50. And the guy's thinking, that's great. I guess 70s. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen that, right? I've seen that on multiple occasions where people get very focused on what they can deliver and they never stop to ask, right? Because yeah. then, you know, and then, and then the feedback they get from the buyer is, no, it's a great product, but you actually, you know, my margin expectation for this category is 70 and you brought me 55. Right. So, I don't know why I'm taking this product. Right. It, it's a lovely product, right? It would do well, except it's not going to make the margin right. expectations I need. Right. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So important. So as you're prepping, that's for you as a brand, that's important that you also build this, you know, with the goal of gaining some intelligence so that you actually yeah. know, right? So yeah. I know everyone goes in kind of eager to make sure they get listed, but don't be blind to that. Make sure you're gathering intelligence as you go. I think you need to ask a lot of questions. Yeah, I really do. I yeah. think at first I think you need to do a lot of research before you get there. Yeah. But I think you should ask questions. Yeah. I mean, if it's just a one-way street, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I can already tell you where this relationship's probably going to go. <laughs> so, so on that note, Kenny. Yes. Um, what does the buyer need to hear? Right. So, knowing the category, prepping yourself, which is what you talked about in the last, um, you know, kind of, you know, the last thing on the last page. Um, what about like? What why about, am I doing this? Yeah, why are you doing this? So so what's a buyer thinking about? So if I'm the if I'm the if I'm the brand I'm presenting to you, what what's going through your head as you're as you're thinking about the product? I mean, what if 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 I if I look at it from the get go, it's, it's a, a nice looking package. I think I can sell it. Your costs are in line, et cetera. I mean, that's fine. But let's say it's not a category that I'm not necessarily strong in. Or maybe it's new to me. Like you, you gotta, you gotta give me a compelling reason to do this. Like why, what, like why would I do me? this? Like What's really, at the me? end of the day, I hate to say that, but yeah, when you're dealing with a buyer or a retailer, it's really all about them. Like, what are you bringing to me to make this make sense for me and my customers, obviously? But it always comes back to me. Like, yeah. why am I doing this? So you know, you and I talked about it before, and that's why you you put the lovely young woman there yep. with the graph is that you better come in with a compelling story and some clear, concise data as to why this is important. Not because you think your product's the greatest in the world. I don't care. Everybody thinks that nobody's going to bring me a product. They think sucks, right? Everybody brings me the greatest product in the world. Why? This yeah. is an emerging yeah. category where, it's an emerging category in Ecuador. That's great. We don't have any Ecuadorians in my store. Well, I care. Right. I'll give you an example. You see all the time, like, and it, this is just a Canadian thing. This sells really well in Quebec. And you're thinking that's great, but I'm in Vancouver. 
and so are my stores. And definitively, a lot of stuff sells across the country, but there is a lot of regionality in this country. So make sure that what you're bringing me, that you do, you can back it, that you give me a compelling reason to play with you. What is it? Like, why am I doing this? And I love the way you did your graph because you picked this one. It's data. Give me something. Like, tell me what's going on. Tell me where there's the void. Not feelings either. And don't tell me that, you know, because shoes is a $10 trillion category, if I brought socks in, we should get 10% of that. Yeah, I can do all those BS stories too. Give me something a little more. Like, tell me what's really happening somewhere. I, I think this should play to your brand and its unique selling positions, right? So when yeah. you've got a USP that makes sense, that's the one that you have to stick to with your buyer, right? Is is here's the reason why you want it. Um, and then here's here's how what I think what buyer loves love buyers love to hear a lot. Um, but you can only say this if you think it's true, right? Or that you can prove it's true is if you put me in your category, the whole category grows. Those are the stories that buyers love the most, right? Because it's one thing to, you know, if you think of this from the buyer's perspective is, let's say I have 25 SKUs in one category and you're coming in and the buyer says to you, listen, I, I, um, I don't have any more space, right? Yeah. Um, what you're automatically up against is now you've got to prove why your SKU can take the place of an of another SKU in that 25 well, SKU category. That's going to force you, Phil. It's you know? going to be one in, one out. You tell yeah. me what leaves. Yeah. And so you have to be able to, or you have to, you know, and so without slagging your competition, right, that's is right. What, you, what you're going to have to be able to show is, listen, if you put me in, here's what happens to the other 24 SKUs in that category. They start to grow. Right. right. Um, you know, because I'm filling a unique selling position or I've got a need gap that isn't that, you know, that nobody's fulfilling, that's why you need to put me in, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and the pro tip there is you know, they never forget, them. right? Like never forget that the other twenty five SKUs that you're up against, the buyer picked those SKUs. So don't go don't go <laughs> Don't go slagging, you know, pro You're other products because never heard that they're they were yeah not that bright that day and they really picked the yeah, wrong yeah. stuff you should deal with yeah. me because I got the right thing. Yeah. Which you may. You may. Right? And you, you have and to you find have another to, way to say that. If, you gotta, if that's you, really exactly. True. And I think sometimes yeah. it's 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 just that there it's finite space. So if you're coming in, something else is most likely gonna have to leave. Why would I do that? And I'm, you know, and I've had this discussion before. Someone will come and says, "Well, I'm less expensive than all these guys, um, and you know, and you know, you'll sell you'll sell more." Okay, how much more? Well, I'm twenty percent cheap. You'll send ten percent more. Okay, so you're going to drive my category sales down, is what you're telling. Yeah, you're me, actually right? taking dollars out of my category. So I'm going to do this to yeah. sell more of yours to make less. So, all right. So that that actually leads us to the other two icons on this page, right? is generally there's kind of two reasons why you you might bring a product in one it drives a ton of traffic or, or the right traffic or right maybe not even correct. a ton but it's a really cool group i don't have yeah mm -hmm. traffic mm -hmm. here what you said before that's right that's right or it drives a lot of profit yeah money sad to say but retailers are in it for the profit so you it's got to be very rarely are there occasions where it's not one of the two. I, most times it's probably both. Mm -hmm. I mean, a reason I, like when, when I was buying, a lot of the reasons I was going into the natural side, it wasn't going to drive me a ton of top line sales necessarily versus what I had. What it did provide me though, was a whole bunch of new consumers that I didn't have. And to compensate for some of the sales losses, I made twice the margin which means I didn't have to sell as many units. But if you can walk me through that story, I can take out potentially a high velocity, low profit, because I might say, you know what? I've, I, I've got that covered in here anyway. I'd really love this new consumer. And I'd really love to make a little bit more money and provide something different to my consumer. So again, go back to the, the, the second icon there, know your data. Tell me why I should do this. Give me some compelling reasons, some examples of how this has worked somewhere. Please do not give me something out of a place that it's got no relevance to me. People in Azerbaijan are lovely people. 
It doesn't matter. I'm in Vancouver, right? Um, Give me something that sort of relates to the world we're in. For the for the smaller guys, I, I know the common complaint is going to be, we don't get data, we can't afford it. Um, but there are... Um, yeah. Tell me how you we can help it. you figure out like what kind of data points you can get. There's sure. some uh, amazing people out there in folks like Field Agent or Shelfgram. Well, Field Agent, um, and, and you know, go crazy with this. You get so yeah, much data. Yeah, you just uh, there's some creative ways to be able to go about getting data. Absolutely. So just make sure you're asking. Um, you know, we uh, we can help. Lots of people can help with that. Um, but just never think that you're totally handcuffed. There are other ways, um, you know, to get um, data to support your position. Plus, there's also remember, don't come in assuming I don't know my category. So yeah. I may know, I I know you may not have the data because you're small. Correct. But then tell me who you're bringing into my store that maybe is it's in my store. Yeah. And if you can't answer, that means you probably haven't been to my store. So yeah. get to my store before you come to me. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's so critical. Make. Like to Listen, give, if you haven't been to a store, talking. if you haven't been to a store, don't lie about it because they'll know, right? And then two is don't, don't do that go just in until until you go to the store. Like yeah. it, it is, like buyers will smell you a million miles yeah. away if you yeah. haven't been in a store, right? And I was like, like, oh, you know, listen, I walked in your store, I saw what you're carrying in the coffee yeah. set. I know I'm another coffee. I, yeah. I know this is where this is going. However, this is some stuff I can share with you. It's listed in these stores within the city. You know, pretend you're just in Vancouver, Toronto, I don't care where you are. This yep. is what it's doing. This is where we've had success. This is the stuff we can bring you to drive this new or more traffic, whatever it is, and what we can do to give you more sales, more margins, whatever yep. I need. Know what your buyer is needing, I guess is typically it. And if you, the reason you'll, if you can be nimble enough where if you go back to the first slide, it's those questions. You'll hear if you if you bring stuff up and all they're talking about is margin, 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 margin. Don't talk sales. Talk margin. Which means your data needs to be you now you got to pivot to get into mm -hmm. the margin story. Listen, we won't drive a ton of Pratt traffic, but the traffic we bring are great basket builders. Here's why I know this, here's what they'll buy. Yeah, we can do margin for you. They're all talking sales, they don't care about margin. Flip your story. Yeah. If yeah. you can. Yeah. Okay. So the last one that we have is what does a buyer need to feel? So buyers are increasingly analytical about the choices they make, um, but they also have strong instincts for picking great products, um, great partners, and they know when to take a risk. Like that's part of being a buyer is they, they have kind of a strong constitution for taking risks and picking unique things. But, you know, there's a mindset um, that a buyer has, and then there are things that you can do to make sure that you're in your buyer's trust mindset. Um, yeah. So, so in this case, we, we've kind of reversed it a little. There's some things you need to know to become, you know, kind of that trusted seller with a green badge. You know, I, I don't know if all buyers. Do you have a badge like that in your head? Like, so when you see people, um, you certainly smile differently when you see people that you like or you trust. I know that for sure. Yeah. Hundred percent. One day he'll smile at me like that too. But. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Let's not let's not get too far out of ourselves. Um, maybe I can I can I can ask you this: is when um, when you're when you're a buyer, Kenny, and you're mm -hmm. day to day, what are the things that um, like your your inbox? What what did that look like before? Like how many emails? Yeah, it's, been, it's been a lot of years since I've I've been out. Yeah. But even my inbox could be anywhere between the stores, vendors, whomever. Like they could be between three and five hundred emails a day on the worst days. Yeah. And like a nice day that was calm is let's say seventy five to a hundred. And, and after how you're many, thinking, oh my god, thank God nobody's bugging me. And then like a an average I you've covered a lot of categories, but how many I mean, average I bought vendors a lot do you have? Of categories. What's that? Yeah. Like how many average vendors do you think you you've had like in a an average category? Oh, uh, I don't know. Sure. Pick a category, any category. Well, I'm thinking like because remember I bought departments, not even categories. Yeah. Like even within food, let's say I might have had I don't know seventy five to one hundred vendors. Yeah. In vitamins, nutrition, maybe it was twenty. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there's lots of them. And you know, again, so so how I pick them would have probably been on the first two slides. If you if I come in, I ask you costs and margins, you have no clue. 
If I ask you about UPCs, you got to go dig around trying to find them. If I'm asking you a million things, you're not going to get the first box. I need to know you understand what I want and that we're talking the same language. Well, right. Yeah. You, come, and, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't want to be, I, I don't want to be a teacher. I did. I was probably a little abnormal that way, but it's really not their role. Their role is yeah. to buy products to make their company more money and give their customers what they want. That's yep. it. Yep. They're not there to be your friend. They're not there to be uh, your mentor. They're not, that's not their role. They should do things like that. I'm not saying they shouldn't. That's not their role. They want to make sure that you understand them and they understand that you're going to be able to understand me. I, I need everything to come back to the buyer. Yeah. So, so on, on those lines, right? And, and I think that's where I was going to by asking you is if you think about the buyer and what they're trying to do, right? So, so um, this is not to say that as a vendor, you don't have needs or, or that nobody cares about you. There are lots of people that care, but when you're, when you're trying to sell a product to a retailer, what you've got to remember is the buyer also answers to stores when the stores are trying to set up, you know, or, or bring the product in, you know, the buyer's thinking about, um, you know, flyers and promo ads and, you know, ad like grids things, and you know, all of those know. sort of things. So well, when you sense. are... You know, so one is, if you think of what we said to ask around questions is, these are things that you have to anticipate too is, you know, how often, you know, how often would you, the brand would like to be on feature on sale? Um, you know, how often would Kenny want to put this category on sale, right? C Kenny's never going to say to you, I want to put you on sale 12 times a year. Kenny would say yeah. your category should go on sale X number of times, right? And then it's your job to make sure that what you're presenting is compelling enough. But if you don't know what you should be presenting, you'll never get a feature spot, right? That's how it works, right? So I think that's where, you know, Kenny's going with some of this understanding stuff is you should be asking those questions like, listen, what, who do I ask for paperwork so that I can fill in the right paperwork? What does good look like? And then when, in your process, are you looking at it, right? So if you're doing a Friday flyer, you know, is it two Fridays before that that you're reviewing it? Is it every Monday, every, every Tuesday? You know, all those sorts of things. Whatever right? it is. Yeah. To me, Phil, yeah. The, the fundamental thing was, is really at the end of the day, and it's worse now because, you know, there's less people in head offices yeah. and there's, the, at the end of the day is you need to be there to help me. I hate to tell you this because we talk. It, it's not about you. It's definitively all about me. You're, it's to make my life easier because at the end of the day, I'm signing the pen as whether you're coming in or not. And I know people don't like the power that they. I get all that, but that is the reality. So you really better come in ready to make sure that when I, you leave, I feel okay. First, you heard me, and I and you speak my language. So I think we're going to get along because we understand each other. You, you told me all the things that you look like you did some homework. You understand what I'm looking for. I need to then feel that this person is not going to be pinging me every 15 bloody minutes for something. Right? They're independent enough. They'll go to whether it's the assistance or when stuff comes to me, it's complete. If it's not complete, well communicated. Can I didn't understand this or this? No problem. This is the person who will help you. But don't send shit into me, this incomplete. As soon as you make it part of, if I have to do the work, what the hell do I have you for? Because then at that point, I might get the inclination. You know what? I should phone the boss and say, listen, mm. you sent Phil out. You know the 5%, 10% you got buried into that cost to pay him? Why don't we just cut it out and give it to me? Because I'm doing all the work anyway. Yeah. So I love your product. I love the story. But if this clown's going to be coming in and wasting my time, then I want the savings. Because I don't know what we're doing this for. So you better make yourself sort of the right-hand person of this buyer. Be that person. When you come in, I, 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 my, some of my favorite ones, they didn't, it wasn't even their category. Hey, Venucci, did you see this? This is what X and X is carrying, it, whatever. Or, you know, it was all those cool things. We thought, wow, these yeah. guys, they actually cared. They, they, you know, and then I, then I care. Then they come in sometimes. We even oddball stuff. You and I have talked about this too. Or probably really shouldn't look at it. But you know what? I trust you. I know you're not out to screw me. You're going to, you're going to play this or some, I'll give you the time. Like you're, if you talk to experienced key account people, I think from the other view is they start to understand the rhythm of things. Right. So, so there are accounts where, you know, like 
I remember with one account, you don't call on Monday mornings because they're all pulling numbers. They're trying to understand what's happening with the category. They want to see what happened on the weekend. And then if you got a call on Monday morning, something went very wrong with your products, something went very wrong with your sale, or you were seriously in trouble of some sort. Um, yes. If you got a call Monday afternoon, it actually was the other side. It was, hey, I'm seeing some serious momentum here. I want to keep I want to keep adding to this. Do you have something that should go in this week's flyer because I got an extra slot open or I'm going to open one because momentum is there. Right. And so you, you know, like you, you start to learn and that's when you're anticipating, right? Because this is those moments where um, I would, right. I would have things ready. So if Kenny called me on, uh, if Kenny called me on Monday morning, I'd already be looking at my numbers so that I can anticipate what he might yeah, be yelling at me for. Because it's rarely good news Monday morning. Uh, no, 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 you never want a buyer to call you on Monday morning. And then if the call was for Monday afternoon, what I'd really want to have is three options laid out for Kenny. So that way, when Kenny said, hey, I go, you know what? Check your inbox. I just sent you three options. What do you want? Right. And then usually that is a really great sign that, you know, I've thought about what he wants. Right. So pretty important stuff. Right. So I think that those are the moments that you kind of go, um, this is this is how a buyer, you know, you start to evolve into a trusted seller spot with a buyer because all of a sudden the buyer is going, wait, so every time I call Chang, he's got stuff ready for me. He knows what I'm going to ask him. So when I call and I say, listen, Kenny, I got to show you something. It's pretty important. Kenny's going to make time for me well, because call. he knows, right? Because yeah, he knows we'll that I know him. Yeah. 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 But again, that's because you be, you've become a trusted, helpful person. Like you get it. And I think I guess people that are, I know, I, and I trust me, I know vendors, it's frustrating. They're, it's not sometimes fun to deal with buyers because they can be prima donnas and they can be difficult. But it's a, it's a hard spot to be in sometimes too because there's a lot of pressure, a lot of fun, but there's a lot of pressure in it, right? And at the end of the day, I, I tell even my field reps that go and talk to stores, you want to get in good with, with the buyer? Help them. Be that person that even let's say it's not theirs, that they would say, you know what? I don't know what the hell's going on. Because we used to do this. I'm going to phone Chang. Hey, Phil, what, what's going on? Like what, what happened this month? You know, I feel may say, listen, it's not just you. It was everybody. Here's what happened or whatever. Like you got to be able to build that. Like, to me, this is almost the most, that was almost the most important slide because mm -hmm. everything else will, will build that last slide. Come prepared. Walk my store before you get to me. Make sure you know what's in my set. Anticipate, like if you see everything at $1.99 and you know everybody else in the streets, $2.99. I'm probably very price aggressive. My margins aren't 50s. I want volume. Don't bring me niche. I'm not that guy or that woman. I mean, we're not those people. I, at that point, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta bob and weave with what it is. You don't go, you know, you don't go into 7-Eleven with a product that's gonna sell one a year and make a hundred thousand dollars margin. They don't care. It's not their gig. Convenience, impulsive, you know, turns. Yeah. You know, and in another store, it's the opposite. They don't want milk. They don't want to, they don't want to handle that stuff. They'd rather sell one a month and make a lot of money. They're happy. Get to know. Anyway, this is our, um, we, we, we've been asked this um, so many times that we thought it'd be times. really interesting to, to kind of put this together. Um, if you have any questions or we've raised any alarm bells or you have any questions or comments, um, definitely Reach out. Um, hit us up. We we'd love to hear from you. Um, but we hope this was helpful. I hope it helped. I hope that helps some. Mm -hmm. Right? Really the trick? Be prepared. Be really prepared. All right. Thank you. Thank you.